Hey everyone and welcome back. So I want to get right into the foundation. So if you take a look at here, uh, this is my color palette that I've built out. These types of things we have to understand that, you know, design systems will continue to evolve with feedback that we get from users, from overall feedback that we get from different types of stakeholders. And generally our product will evolve over time. But what I've done here, you can see that I have a primary color palette, which is like the primary yellow. And I have a yellow that is just like a 20% version. So I've basically created these sections and I'll show you how I've even structured it. And you have this file as well. You'll see that I have these all in auto layout grids. You have a color row and I have each individual color and then text and the color. So that even within the text, I have the name of the color. I have the hex value and I have the actual color. Now, what I've done here is once I've picked the color, I'll go into my styles and I can create a new style if I want to. I have a bunch of styles here already and you've seen me do that a bunch of times already. So this one is under the primary section. I've also given myself a couple of secondary colors if I need them, which are a blue, and a blue variant, kind of like the yellow, green and a green variant, just like the yellow. One thing you don't wanna do is give yourself way too many options. I'm not saying that I will use all these variants. It helps to kind of have them, especially when you're building out an interface. Now I'll show you how I'll use those in later videos. Another thing that I've done as well is I've given myself accent colors. Now, do I need them? Maybe. These accent colors will help us brighten different parts of the app. So if we want to build like an animation with like confetti, like we can use a lot of different colors like that. And I don't see myself using these colors in many other instances, but you know, they're fun, playful colors that we can use if we need to just inject some of that into the application when we want to. And that's what I've done here. I've created all these different accent colors and they're in my styles, my color styles over here. So you'll see I have my primary, secondary, I have my accents, and I have my user interface colors as well. Now, what are user interface colors? And I mean, you can name them whatever you'd like. I like to break these up into different sections because when I'm applying them to something, and I'll get into that as well, it's easier to pick that apart. So if I have like a background that is white, I'm going to use the background white style not just the UI white style. If I have an icon that's white, I'll probably use the white UI style. If I have text that's white, I'll use the text white style. So that's definitely the reason why I've decided to break these out and duplicate them. That is just so that we, when we're using them, we have a lot more flexibility. Now it might take a little bit more upfront work, but you'll have all these different styles to use and you'll be able to easily swap out the ones that you intend to. Instead of swapping out one UI color and affecting everything, you'll be able to pinpoint, you know, if I'm touching a button, I'll be able to just touch the text or the UI colors or the background colors if I wanted to. And I'll show you how that works. But what I've done here is I've, uh, taking out the grayscale palette and I've broken it into just different increments. So I have like a gray 100, which is basically like a black, gray 80, gray 60, gray 40, and so on. So this will give me a lot more to choose from when I'm using grayscale within our application. In the background, I've given myself a couple of different options, one being white and a nice little gray here. And in the text section here, I've given myself a bunch of different options. Now, uh, when we spoke about accessibility, these colors may not be accessible and I may not use them, but yellow can be accessible if we're using it over like a dark black or like an image. So I've given myself that option if I ever need it. I've given myself definitely a green and red option for success in air colors when it comes to things like forms. And I've given myself a lot of variants in terms of grayscale because that is going to come in handy when we're trying to distinguish like just create hierarchy within different text applications. So titles, subheadings, and so on. So when you're building out a color palette, or if you want to call us a color system, 
Remember to give yourself enough variance, not too much. You don't want to have like 20 different grays. I mean, that's going to muddy your design. But I've given myself, you know, five variants of gray and I probably use just the, the majority of the time for text, I'm using these three. Black is when I maybe need something that's really, really dark, but I'll use mostly this to be my darkest, which is the gray 80. And if I want to create more uh, hierarchy, I'll use something like a gray 60. Then once we get into the 40 and 20, you know, we have a little bit of diminishing returns because we just have legibility issues. So this is how I've laid out my color system. And another thing is I've created it in a way where it just looks really nice. If you can see over here, everything is spaced out like 40 pixels between each other. Everything is, even the borders are all very nice and uh, spaced out perfectly. So if you'll see if I change this to like 50, left and right will be closer. The horizontal spacing will tighten up, but I've decided to just uh, use 80, obviously a multiple of our base unit, and I'll get into that next. So that is how I've actually laid out our colors system. And you'll notice that this is what it looks like when you're using your design system and when you're using it elsewhere in other files. So this is it.